This video is on applying and etching a spray paint Aquatint. This does not use the super black method, but one single application. Aquatint is a means of creating tone on a plate. It is essentially a fine pepperine of ground. The acid etches around the Aquatint particles to create a rough, porous surface that holds ink. When you think of carding ink across a plate, consider the unetched surface as having a texture similar to glass. It's smooth and the ink pulls easily across it. But by applying and etching an aquatint into the plate, you can create a texture more akin to sandpaper. This rough surface catches and holds ink. This is the second plate in a multi-plate print. Thinking initially that I only wanted to do one layer of aquatint, I applied a tarnish and removed the ink from the surface that correlated with the key plate. Because of this, there is a little troubleshooting in this video. But know that if you plan from the beginning to do a multi-step etch, it's best to leave the ink on the plate so as not to lose your guide with the first etch, which is longer than a tarnish, and will burn the delicate marks away. This plate has been degreased using the salt-vinegar-water mixture. Unless absolutely necessary, skip using whiting or any types of abrasives that might erode the tarnish. If you still have transferred ink on the surface, do not degrease the plate. The metallic line of Rust-Oleum spray seems to work best for Aquatint. For whatever reason, the paint in the metallic variety doesn't splatter when it makes contact with the plate, but retains a round shape, allowing for more space between the speckles. If the paint speckles bleed and merge, as they are more prone to do with other colors, they will block the mordant's access to the copper, essentially creating a ground that covers and protects the whole plate. In a well-ventilated area, set up cardboard or scrap paper for spraying the plate. Set the plate at a 45 degree angle. Shake the spray can thoroughly. It usually takes about 15 seconds. Begin by spraying a little of the paint off to the side to be sure the nozzle is clear and won't splatter on the plate. A spitty can will spray dots of unpredictable size. Holding the can about 12 inches away, begin and end the spray off to either side of the plate. For a consistent application, do not start or stop off the plate. Your goal is 50% coverage. Do not overspray or underspray. This is difficult and takes practice. If you need to remove the spray paint and try again, it comes off with rubbing alcohol. Before your plate goes in the mordant, stop out any areas you want to stay white. There are many different types of stop out you can use. Sharpie is easily accessible and inexpensive. Like the spray paint, Sharpie will only hold up for about 15 to 20 minutes before the mordant starts to break through. Begin by mixing your mordant. I'm using 3 cups vinegar, 2 cups hydrogen peroxide, a quarter cup salt. Here are some loose guidelines for etching an aquatint. Aquatints are more fragile than a line etch as the mordant can undercut the little specks and pop them off. So they become gradually darker with etching until the little specks pop off and then they become lighter. This first etch lasted about five minutes to reach a light gray value. Remember to mind the plate and agitate the mordant when the plate gets bubbly. Remove and dry the plate. Now, because I did a tarnish on this plate, instead of leaving the key plate's ink on the surface, I've lost my guidelines. As a workaround, I'm copying part of the key image onto tracing paper. It's a fairly simple shape I want to transfer. This method may not work for something more complex. Again, if you plan to etch multiple values, leave the ink on the plate and skip the tarnish step. I laid down some Conte crayon to make the transfer easier. If you still have ink on your plate, you won't need to do this step. Using a pencil, I transferred the shape I wanted to protect from the next etch. I covered any area that I wanted to stay light gray. I also reinforced the Sharpie already on the plate, protecting the white values. Now the plate is ready for a second etch. In it goes for another 15 minutes. 
This will bring my total etch time to 20 minutes. If I wanted to go darker, I would need to remove the aquatint and reapply to avoid undercutting. When the time is up, remove the plate and blot it dry. Remove the spray paint and Sharpie with rubbing alcohol. I went ahead and degreased this plate to better show how the Aquatint etched. Here are the two plates side by side. The key is up above and the Aquatint plate is beneath. Here they are printed separately. I will make another video demonstrating how to print them together.